What is cultural identity? We, we like to talk about it so much, and, but it's, it's, it's a fiction. Hi, my name is Munira Al-Kadiri, and I'm a visual artist from Kuwait. There are a lot of texts um, from the Arabic um, yeah. religion or culture, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but at the same time, it, it's quite um, the each video work has a very singular color or yeah. a very singular aesthetic. How does it come? What is the what is the process? Yeah, I mean there is a common thread in all the works. It's it's just a, it doesn't take the same shape or medium or format. Um, but it, it is a kind of extension of, of myself and my body and my history. So, but yeah, um, I studied in Japan, so my work is very influenced by this kind of hyper-visual uh, culture which I absorbed in Japan. Um, against this very poetic, let's say more literature uh, focused um, uh, world in the Arab, in the Arab, let's say, artistic uh, imagination. Um, so I'm always trying to clash these, this kind of literature with with this hyper visual, um, almost two dimensional uh, kind of cheap imagery, um, and how to mix these in an in interesting way. So. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's it's also like the, the common, let's say, concepts are masculinity, uh, either through myself cross-dressing or through the voice of a man, which I will never be able to have as a woman. <laughs> and I linked kind of my own narcissism with with gender. In this in this film, uh, Father of Pain, uh, you are performing a Maval song, uh, which normally is uh, written or performed through male uh, figures and you transformed yourself into a male figure. Do you think there is a difference between uh, male and female pain or how, how it is expressed? Yes, and um, I was always fascinated by the image of the man and I think it was a kind of a, a, a kind of aspiration towards power because we live in this patriarchal society and I really wanted to access the, this kind of male power um, but I don't really know uh, the limits of this fascination and I always try to explore it in my work uh, and I don't yeah I don't even know if it's fem feminist or if it's a critique even mm. um, it's just a, a fascination with a gender that I can't access yeah, and also my, my fascination with the kind of these folkloric songs that never get visually translated into an image. Um, you know, we think of music videos as always this kind of commercial activity to sell the next big hit. Um, but why aren't there music videos from, for songs from 1922? Mm. <laughs> um, and and these, the lyrics and the way it's done is very, very interesting. Um, Especially for this song, I thought the, the lyrics were very strange because usually these songs about a lo uh, lost love and things like that, but, but he's uh, singing here uh, towards uh, insomnia. He's talking to insomnia, yeah. which is very strange, uh, almost like an abstract uh, conceptual <laughs> song. Um, and uh, yeah, and I wanted to try to visually translate that. And, and this work was actually made in 2011, 2012 which was a very uh, active time in, in the Arab world. Um, and yeah, I was also personally going through a lot of kind of emotions, um, euphoria and then tragedy, sadness all, all the time um, during, let's say, the Arab Spring. So it, it felt like mm. you were being alive and then dying and then coming back. And so it was like this also uh, reflection of, of the time it was made. Yeah. The camel video, I think, is kind of it was like a kind of uh, a meditation on where where are we headed? Because uh, camel racing was this kind of heroic uh, a race, you know. There's a rider and everything, and uh, 
at some point they discovered that children uh, make better jockeys than ad adults because the, uh, uh, I don't know they sit better They're on smaller. the camel. And it's smaller, yeah. No, lighter. Uh, lighter yeah. on the camel. Um, but that practice was banned because it's uh, against uh, the law. <laughs> mm. And uh, so they replaced uh, the jockeys with uh, robots, which are actually uh, they're just mechanical drills. But instead of a drill, they have a whip, and the whip hits the camel uh, with a remote control. It works. So the, the owner of the camel goes, rides a, like a jeep or a truck next to the camel and it's like <laughs> whipping it. And the camel, it, it, there's nothing heroic or enamored about it. It was just a very strange vision of like, uh, you know, almost like torture. Uh, mm. What does this mean anymore? So w it's a very short work, but um, yeah, it's, I'm also very fascinated by tragedy. Um, I, I wrote a thesis called The Aesthetics of yeah. Sadness in the Middle East. So um, yeah, my work can, all reflects yeah. this kind of <coughs> tra tragedies, let's yeah. say, in, in terms of gender, in terms of culture, in terms of, yeah, machines. Uh, the other film, Behind the Sun, mm -hmm. so that <coughs> is about the Gulf War mm -hmm. in uh, 1991, mm -hmm. where we only saw these um, uh, oil fields. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what you did in Behind the Sun is a response, so to say, to a work by Van Herzog yeah. um, that has to do with um, with that image. Mm -hmm. um, how how came that as a as a critique against <laughs> images or against Van Herzog or? No, I mean I saw this film by Van Herzog, which was a documentary at the time. We thought it was a documentary. It was just after the war. Um, my parents had it on a VHS tape, I don't know why, and it just said, you know, it's called um, Lessons of Darkness, and just put it in the tape player, and I watched it, and, and I was like, what is this? Is this, this? Why is this German man making up stories about our war? You know? <laughs> it's almost like I own the war also, but um, uh, it was strange, because it was, it's docu-fiction, and also as a child, you don't understand that. Mm. And obviously, with, with time, I started watching his other films and started to understand his world. But at the same time, this kind of seven-year-old self keeps telling me, this is wrong. There's something wrong with this film. <laughs> and <laughs> I felt it was decontextualized in a way that he uh, used this Christian biblical text with the Wagner soundtrack. And it's from this kind of God perspective. It's very distant in a way from what's really happening. Um, so I just wanted to kind of recreate my own version of it and see what happens. Um, and I found an amateur photographer in Kuwait called um, Adel El Yusufi, who took 25,000 photographs of the oil fields um, and as, he, as an amateur photographer. And I told him, you know, why did you do that? And he said, you know, I, I just wanted to show my family the, 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 uh, the extent of the destruction that was happening. And I asked him, do you have any videos? And he said, oh, I have these terrible VHS tapes, but you can have them. <laughs> but the, the wonderful thing about these videos is there was this handheld camera. He's standing right there in front of this burning thing, and his camera is shaking, and, and almost like his car was going to blow up. And it's, it's just a very uh, kind of, there's a very human touch to it. The audio uh, playing against um, the film is the, uh, it's these, in television program inserts that they used to have um, in between, uh, let's say, the, the news and the TV series. They would put this insert. And it was always um, images of, of a waterfall or a forest or a volcano. And they would read this beautiful poetry about like the sublimity of God and that you can find God in everything. There's always insects and bees and this beautiful voice, and it, it's almost orgasmic. And, um, and then they disappeared, these inserts. And I think because religion in, in the Middle East uh, used to have a kind of more uh, holistic 
let's say more Sufi uh, tendency where you know mm. you can just uh, find God in everything and uh, after the mid 90s I think it became more towards a kind of behavioral uh, interpretation where it's just about like uh, prayer and Mecca and that's it and there's no images and no so I also wanted to show like these kind of let's say dead dead images uh, combine them together the dead image of, of the war in Kuwait which is kind of forgotten and also the dead images of this kind of uh, religious imagination which changes very quickly people always think oh religion is such a constant but it's not so I wanted to combine these uh, things that don't exist anymore and, and create this uh, film yeah thank you very much for the interview <laughs> on Yira and I'm happy to have you here in Frankfurt I'm very happy to see be you here <laughs>